Hey guys, it's Devin here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be talking about how to roll a Jeep. Let's get started. To demonstrate how a rollover works, I've drawn three pictures here. Our first one represents a vehicle on flat ground. So here's the body of the vehicle, here's our axle, our tires, and this little red dot in the middle is our center of gravity. Now, what your center of gravity is, if you were to balance your vehicle on that exact point, it wouldn't move at all. It wouldn't uh, lean forwards, backwards, side to side. It would be perfectly balanced on that point. Um, now, what this vertical black line is, is how we can tell how much weight is on each one of the tires. If our vertical line is straight, is uh, directly in between the two tires, that means we have an even distribution of weight. So, the same amount of weight is on this wheel and this wheel as well. Um, now, when our vehicle starts to lean a little bit, let's say we drove up one tire on a rock and the other one's still down low, our center of gravity doesn't change. It's still the same point on the vehicle. What changes though is when we draw our vertical line between the ground and our uh, center of gravity, all of a sudden it's not between the axles like it was, or excuse me, between the tires like it is on this one, it's shifted now towards this tire. What that means is we're going to have a lot less weight on this one and a lot more weight on this tire. We're not going to roll over yet, and the reason why this is is because our vertical line is still in between the tires, it's on the inside of the tires. Now, this last picture is where a rollover is going to occur. We have our center of gravity, we drew our vertical line between the ground and our center of gravity, and what we see is it falls on the outside of our tire. That means our uh, vehicle is no longer supported by this wheel. If it were perfectly on this one, you'd balance it on that tire, but since we're actually on the outside of the tire, there's nothing to support the vehicle, so it's going to roll. Now that we've talked about how a rollover occurs, let's talk about how to prevent one. We'll start here with this picture. This is our same body of the vehicle, axle, wheels, center of gravity, but now instead of drawing a vertical line between the ground and the center of gravity, I've drawn an, uh, a line from the center of gravity out to each one of the tires. Like I said before, if the vertical line between the center of gravity and the ground falls anywhere between these tires, you're not going to roll over. But if we go now to the outside of this line, that's when a rollover occurs. So this line, these two lines here, uh, represent the most extreme amount of lean you can get before your vehicle uh, rolls over. The wider this angle is, the more stable the vehicle is. That means you can lean it a lot more before it rolls over. So if we go from our stock vehicle, now we've lifted it. We haven't changed anything else, we've just lifted the vehicle. And as you can see, we go from quite a wide angle, now to a little bit of a skinnier one. That means this vehicle is a lot more likely to roll over. So we can fix that with a couple of ways here. One is we can get a wider axle. You can see these are the same height, but our axle is quite a bit wider. Now, you can either buy a wider axle. If you need to uh, get new axles for your vehicle, you might want to look into a uh, little bit wider ones to give you more uh, stability. Or if you don't have that kind of money, there's a couple other options. You can get wheel spacers. Those go between the axle and the wheel themselves, and all it does is it pushes your wheels from here and pushes them out to the side. You can get like inch long, or there's a bunch of different sizes you can get depending on how wide you want to be. Uh, another way is if you need to buy new wheels, get wheels with less back spacing. The lower number your back spacing is, so let's say if your stock wheels have four inches of back spacing and you go to three inches of back spacing, your wheels are now one inch wider on each side. So if you go uh, one inch less of back spacing for all your wheels, you now gain two inches of width on your axle. So the wider your vehicle is, um, axle-wise, the less likely it is to roll over. Now we're going to go back to the same um, kind of stock ride height looking. But uh, what this is, is it's talking about the weight in your vehicle. You can change the center of your gravity of your vehicle by where you put all the weight. So this is just a stock vehicle. Now this is a vehicle, same height, but we've got some weight on the roof. Let's say you put your spare tire on the roof. You've got a roof rack with a bunch of weight on it. Just know that now all of a sudden, your center of gravity isn't low anymore. You raise the center of your gravity by putting weight up high. So if you want to uh, really make sure you don't want to have a rollover, you don't want to have a lot of weight up high in your vehicle, that'll keep your center of gravity low. Rollovers don't just happen side to side. You can roll forwards and backwards as well. So here we have a side shot of the vehicle. Um, I put the center of gravity in the middle, but in reality, this would probably be a lot closer to the front. Think about it, you got a heavy engine in the, in the front, so you got a lot more weight up here, um, but for this demonstration, center gravity is in the middle. Um, this is the vehicle sitting flat, we got our vertical line, it's in between the wheels, so we're good. Now we're going to start going up a little bit of a hill. As you can see, our vertical line has shifted backwards a little bit, but again,
again, the center of gravity doesn't change. Now we've gone up an even steeper hill, and we still have the same center of gravity, but now our vertical line between the center of gravity and the ground is outside of the wheels, and this is going to cause a rollover. Now to be clear, this doesn't happen nearly as often as a side-to-side -side roll. Your wheelbase is longer than how wide your axles are, so this is less of a concern unless you really, really have a, a high lift or you're going up some very, very steep things. But since it is a possibility, it's worth mentioning here. Um, the way you fix this is you can uh, stretch your wheelbase. You can push these tires farther apart. Um, this is a little bit more complicated than just swapping out an axle and to make it wider or getting wider wheels. Um, there's, you need control arms, and it's a little bit more complicated than just uh, widening a vehicle, but it is something to think about if you really, really need um, stability forwards and backwards as well. So now that we've talked about stability and rollovers, you've got a couple things to think about. How high do you want your vehicle to be, and how stable do you need it to be? And just know that there's a trade-off between the two. But you can also make up for some of that lost stability by keeping all the weight in your vehicle as low as possible to help lower that center of gravity, and also by making your vehicle as wide as possible. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below, and if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. Thanks.